What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Another Thursday, another episode of Simply Sessions. We've got Nico joining us today to give us the latest and greatest in all the Bitcoin news. And I will be following up afterwards with all of the latest tech updates and things to keep your eye on. Of course, be sure to like, subscribe, share that little like button. It's just below. Click it now. It really, really does help. Uh, share this around and of course, subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your Simply Session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you've got priorities in mind that include peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and most importantly, no KYC, this is the place to be. You can sign up with just an email address. Once you're in, choose a currency, a payment method, and an amount, and you can start browsing offers immediately and stack in those non-KYC sats. They also have a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. I encourage you to check them out. Links are down below and I do have a full tutorial as well. Now, when you do stack some sats, you're gonna to wanna to secure them with the best damn hardware on the market and CoinKite is killing it. The cold card Mark IV is my go-to hardware of choice and I've got all of their other stuff too. I've got tap signers and sats cards and block clocks and open dimes and I have put in a reservation for my cold card Q1 which should be dropping in the coming months here. If you'd like to reserve your own or pick up anything else that I've mentioned here head over to coinkite.com and use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything at checkout. Uh, now of course when you're securing uh, your stack Backups are important and one of the most beautifully designed, high-end and robust steel backup solutions on the market is the C-Door. So it's got this disc and capsule design and it is beautifully done. I've got to say um, it is uh, I dare I say a premium product and uh, it's built to last. So it will shelter your seed phrase from the elements, fire, water, corrosion, you name it. They've got you covered. The starter set comes with everything you need to back up and secure two seed phrases, and you can always order more capsules and discs as you see fit. Check out the links down below, and uh, and they are shipping now and have units in North America, so don't be shy. Uh, check them out. If you're looking to check out also multi-sig, namely assisted multi-sig or collaborative custody, be sure to check out nunchuck.io. Um, I'm using them myself. And what it is, is you can set up a multi-sig wallet on your mobile device. They basically hold your hand through the entire way. You can use devices like the tap sign or the cold card and a ton of other hardware options. It all gets set up very easily. It has baked in inheritance planning so that your sats get to your next of kin. And on top of that, the whole thing, unlike other options on the market, is no KYC. All you need as an email address and you can set this up and have it work for you. Check them out and check out my tutorial. Links are down below. And finally, shout out to Start9, your sovereign computing solution. These plug and play devices are amazing. You can run your full Bitcoin stack and your data on them. There are things like Bitcoin Core, Lightning Node, mempool.space, join market. You can host your data, files, passwords, photos, uh, encrypted messengers, all kinds of stuff with these things. They have entry level devices if you're trying to keep the budget uh, you know, on, on the low. And if you want something serious, you can check out what I'm running, which is the Start9 Server Pure. Either way, you're going to be set. Be sure to check them out, start9.com. And with that, Let's dive into the news. Yo, welcome to another episode of Simply Sessions. We're going to be holding it down. Ben's in Nashville, Tennessee, visiting Bitcoin Park. If anyone who hasn't made that trek, I highly recommend it. Bitcoin Park is absolutely phenomenal. Shout out to Odell and Rod for putting that together, man. Incredible, incredible project. Enough of that. We have some crazy, crazy news this week. Like always, it is the Bitcoin roller coaster. After all, first... Another clip from none other than Tucker Carlson saying the quiet part out loud, calling fiat currencies for what they are scams. But the way he said it, the way he articulated it in one minute, holy cow. 
and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the significance of it in a second. But first, let's check out the clip. Politicians, money is power. They always crave more. But because they don't actually produce anything, they've got limited ways to get it. They can hike taxes on the population and collect the cash at gunpoint. That's the most straightforward way. But it's also highly unpopular. Voters don't like paying higher taxes. They resent it. So over time, most politicians in most places decide it's a lot easier to devalue the currency. You keep the tax rate pretty much the same, you just print more money. At first, most people don't even notice that it's happening. The money seems free. This is how the US government just paid for the COVID checks and the war in Ukraine and pretty much everything else that Washington has done for the past couple of decades, just churn out more dollars. You can see why it's a popular strategy. But what happens if you keep doing it year after year? We really ought to know. So to find out, we flew to Argentina. Coming in hot. So what is happening in Argentina? Argentina is go currently enduring hyperinflation, more than 100% inflation. I think the last time I checked, it was like 105. And this led to an Austrian economist, someone who literally said they want to end the central bank they're fan, he's a fan of Bitcoin, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Javier Mali. And he won the presidential primary and has a really, really good shot at actually whiz, uh, winning the presidency of Argentina. This is all due because people are sick and tired of the broken money. But the way that Tucker described it is something that Bitcoiners have been talking about for the longest time and what the consequences are of printing money, right? It, 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 it misaligns society's incentives. It allows the government to get bigger and bigger and bigger because it's a hidden tax. It's a tax that people are not aware of that allows the funding of endless wars, endless programs that people might not necessarily agree with. And they don't have to piss off the population because it's not direct taxation, right? It's, it's taxation through currency debasement. Um, but I guess the, you know, the, the good news is that this guy literally verbatim has said, I want to end the central bank. And he has a really good shot at becoming Argentina's next president. And also he is a fan of Bitcoin. Now on the other side, on the other front, uh, we've been talking a lot about, you know, the, the, how the internet is disintermediating information. If Bitcoin is disintermediation money, uh, the internet is disintermediating information. And this is why, you know, Tucker going on, going in hot, posting these videos directly to Twitter, circumventing the legacy corporate media. I believe that part of the reason that he was let go is because he wasn't uh, touting the party line, so to speak. He was he had a different uh, differences of opinion uh, compared to, you know, what you what you would call would be the acceptable narrative. Uh, and now he's posting directly on Twitter and he's breaking the Internet. Uh, the interview that he got with Trump got two hundred and thirty million views. And of course, if you compare this to the numbers that he had when he was part of Fox News, he was averaging about 3.5 million on his uh, on his uh, nightly show. So again, I think this is another example of how the Internet is empowering you, the individual, not only by allowing you to seek the information that you wish you wish to consume, but also empowering you by uh, by giving you the ability to choose the money that you want to use. And I think uh, it, the incentive incentives, all incentives, uh, you know, the incentives themselves will lead to Bitcoin. All roads inevitably lead to Bitcoin. So Tucker coming in hot. Great, great clip. In other news, uh, again, talking about Bitcoin's intent incentives, talking about how Bitcoin is fundamentally changing the world. Uh, First, I want to focus on the framing of this article. So it says Texas paid uh, Nick uh, Bitcoin miner riot thirty one point seven million to shut down during heat wave in August. Bitcoin miner riot platforms raked in thirty one point seven million in energy credits from cre uh, from Texas uh, power grid operator ERCOT in August during a record breaking heat wave in the state. Riot voluntarily curtailed its energy consumption to take advantage of credits available by limiting use. Riot is benefiting from an alternative source of income at a time when losses are mounting. Now, the way that that article is framed, you would say that, uh, 
you would basically be saying that like, OK, you know, obviously, you know, Bitcoin miners are taking advantage of, of the energy grid in Texas. They're, ta they're taking a red, uh, advantage of this deregulated energy grid. But I think Nick Carter summarized it here perfectly. Uh, he said, it's pretty funny that Texas built a ton of wind and solar, is now dealing with grid instability because of that. And Bitcoin miners that are long power volatility are making money as a consequence. The greens are seething about it, but the culprit is the wind and solar that they love. If you don't want miners to make money selling insurance to increasingly unstable grids, don't push variable intermediate renewables so hard. It's that simple. And that's absolutely right. Look, Bitcoin serves as the miner, the buyer of last resort, right? So it allows grid operators not to have to speculate uh, on the enemy. Uh, sorry, not guess, speculate. I guess that's not the appropriate word, but guess or anticipate or calculate what the demand is going to be. If they have a buyer that's always there that is able to literally flick a switch, turn on and off at a moment's notice, that provides grid stability. And that's exactly what's happening in Texas. I just want to be wary of how this arc article was framed, right? Because uh, it it, 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 like you read the headline, you're like, like tick, Bitcoin miners are just stealing from the state of Texas. That's not at all what is happening. And it surprises me, too, because this article is coming from Mackenzie, uh, Mackenzie Sagalos, who's done an incredible job covering the industry. She definitely I would say she's definitely a Bitcoiner. Uh, it's, it's, she, she goes to the Bitcoin conferences everywhere. So it's just it, it surprises me how the article was framed. And here's another piece from K33 Research. The headline is Bitcoin mining using stranded natural gas is the most cost effective way to reduce emissions, obviously, right? And here is emissions avoidance per $1,000 investment. And if you invest into uh, wind, it's at 1.3. If you invest into solar, it's, poor, it's 0.98. If you invest into mitigating gas flaring by mining Bitcoin, it's at 6.32. It's almost six times more efficient. It's almost as if Bitcoin's incentives continue to stay winning. In other news, there are three things that Michael Saylor said needed to happen in order for Bitcoin to reach a $5 million price per coin. And those three things have happened. Uh, let's check out what the Chad Saylor has to say, uh, has to say and then we'll dive, we'll dive into it. And, and you think the catalyst for that 10x, is, it really is... The moment that J.P. Morgan Chase or, or, or other big money center banks can custody these for large corporates, that's it. That's the sea change because there's really no reason why they shouldn't be diversifying the assets on their balance sheet. Is that is that your take? Because I know that like Tim Cook, I don't know where it came from earlier this week. He said something like, ah, I own some Bitcoin, but we have no designs on anything. Or I don't know if he said Bitcoin or crypto in general. Is that the thing? And then, and then yeah, the, I uh, think the, there's the three just, big Look, first of all, it's going up by a factor of 10, whether they fix any of this stuff, right? It's going to go a lot. It's going to be a grind up by a factor of 10 just because gold is broken and Bitcoin's going to replace gold. And now everybody in the universe knows they need a non-sovereign store of value in the form of a bearer instrument. So now they're looking the the amount of stories for last year. People said inflation may be coming. We're not sure. Now the mainstream narrative is flipped to inflation is here. You need inflation hedge. So it's going to grind up to replace gold. It'll go to $500,000 a coin, regardless of whether they fix these things. But there are three things that are massive catalysts that cause an acceleration. And I don't think that those three things don't take us to 500000 They take us to $5 million a coin, right? Those three things are a spot ETF where someone can go ahead and buy $100 million of Bitcoin via a security, an ETF security. I think that's one. Two is your bank is going to custody it for you and lend against it. And three is uh, I can mark it up or mark it down on my balance sheet based on fair value. Parapasu, it'll be parapasu to the way I'd handle Apple stock, or at least that good. If it's if you have property with fair value accounting, by the way, it becomes parapasu to the way you'd handle treasury bonds on a treasury balance sheet. Treasuries are better than stocks because treasury is property, whereas a stock is a security, and you're capped out at forty percent of your balance sheet as security. So. So uh, it would be a major, major breakthrough if, if you saw any of those three things. And I, I'll end with this one observation. I tweeted this last week, but I still I think it's very powerful. It's if the banks can hold this stuff on their balance sheet, then 
a whole new class of investors are going to buy it. People are going to put in billion and multi-billion dollar orders to buy it as a treasury asset. Nobody's going to sell it because because there's no reason to sell it if you can borrow against it at LIBOR plus or at SOFR plus 50 basis points. Right. So you'll be you'll be borrowing against Bitcoin at SOFR plus 50 or SOFR plus 100 basis points. No one's ever going to sell it. And then, as I joked, you won't be able to afford it. I mean, you will be able to afford it. But, you know, everybody gets Bitcoin at the price they deserve. Boom. Boom. Three things. Right. First, the spot Bitcoin ETF. Second, will banks be able to custody Bitcoin? And then the 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 FASB. Well, two of those three things have happened. Right. Large banks are applying to custody Bitcoin. They're applying to get the licenses. They're moving forward. Uh, you have BNY Mellon here in the United States. And today is where I want to cover this news. Deutsche Bank announced that they have plans to custody digital assets for their institutional clients. Of course, the FASB rules broke this week as well. And this is very, very, very big news. So we'll get to all of that. But first, the first thing that Michael Saylor said needed to happen in order to, for Bitcoin to reach $5 million a coin is the spot Bitcoin ETF. Well, there's tremendous amount of progress in that. He made that video before BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, announced that they're launching their own spot Bitcoin ETF pending the SEC approval. Thing number two, large banks offering having the ability to custody Bitcoin and shit coins for their institutional clients. This is breaking news coming out of Reuters. Deutsche Bank to hold crypto for institutional clients. We've seen something very similar here happen in the United States as well. Also in Europe, it seems once again that banks, nobody can resist Bitcoin's incentives. Thing number three, the infamous FASB. And this is the thing, I think this is the topic that has been hardest to cover because a lot of people are not familiar with uh, these accounting rules. But anyways, uh, this is the third thing that Michael Saylor said needed to happen in order for Bitcoin to reach $500 million, sorry, $5 million a coin. Um, and let's check out this Bitcoin Magazine article. It says FASB votes or FASB votes in favor of fair value accounting for Bitcoin. The long anticipated move uh, that the Financial Accounting Standards Board is set to introduce new fair value accounting for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. These new rules aim to provide a more accurate reflection of the market value of digital assets and bring greater transparency to the financial reporting of companies that hold cryptocurrencies. The rules expected to be published by the end of the year are set to go in, into effect as soon as 2025, but companies will be able to apply them earlier than that, the report said. For years, the valuation of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin has been a challenging aspect of financial reporting for companies. The volatile nature of these digital assets has made it difficult to accurately assess their fair market value. Under the current accounting standards, companies often struggle to present a true picture of their financial health as the value of Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies fluctuate wildly. The, the FASB's move to introduce fair value accounting rules will require companies to regularly assess the fair market value of their digital assets and report any fluctuations in value as part of their financial statements. This means that if the price of Bitcoin surges or plummets, companies will have to reflect these changes in their financial reports, providing proving uh, providing stakeholders with a more accurate picture of their financial uh, position. And this was a big reason. These uh, these reporting requirements was a big reasons, a big disincentive, I believe, as to why other public companies have not followed Michael Saylor's footsteps. Well, that has all that was until now. So very, very bullish news overall. Ben, hold it down in Nashville. Guys, this was your Simply Sessions. Thank you so much, Nico. Let's dive into the tech updates. And uh, this this one is it's more of a, a sad slash funny story that I wanted to highlight before I dive into some other stuff. Uh, Chainalysis denounces Bitcoin core contributor Brian Bishop as unqualified to audit its code. Uh, so they're basically attempting to evade source code audits by denouncing a core contributor as uh, unqualified and they cite a risk of irreparable damage to its business. Yeah, because obviously if your shit doesn't work. Anyways, so um, Chainalysis now argues that Bitcoin core contributor Brian Bishop, the expert witness produced by Sterling Goff's defense to audit chain analysis source code is unqualified for the job due to his lack of computer science degree, stating he does not appear to be a reliable software engineer, let alone a reliable evaluator of software. Wow. 
the credentialism at its finest dude literally is helping build uh the the very thing that chainalysis is trying to track on and they're saying that he's not capable anyways uh source code is requested by the defense in the case of the us versus sterling of uh, an early Bitcoin adopter currently awaiting trial for the alleged operation of the custodial Bitcoin mixer, Bitcoin Fog, to reproduce the software's findings in light of the hack of corro- a lack of corroborating evidence. The defendant and his experts may quarrel over those heuristics, but they will be explained, understandable, and verifiable without any access to the source code, Chainalysis claims. Uh, the person defendant um, proposes at, as his latest expert, Brian Bishop, is no expert at all, but rather an unqualified, biased, and apparently extreme biohacker who currently projects, a, uh, whose current projects appear to involve genetic experiments rather than computer science projects. Wow. Chainalysis also argues that Mr. Bishop has a massive incentive to abuse his access to Chainalysis in order to attempt to figure out why he could not, in his previous efforts, develop software to effectively mitigate money laundering and terrorism finance risks, what stopped his prior custodia bank from getting a license to operate by the Federal Reserve. Now, the hilarious thing about that is one of the things cited that uh, prevented Custodia Bank from uh, being approved this license is that things like chain analysis cannot properly audit and and discern uh, money laundering. So they're literally saying in the same report that Chainalysis is saying uh, Bishop is unqualified, that same report said that Chainalysis doesn't work. So this is why your bank can't be a a reserve bank. Anyways, um, besides the point, Chainalysis is bullshit. Fuck that company and everything that they're doing. And you should coin join because um, the sooner that all their stuff is proven to be useless, the sooner they go out of business. Uh, Moving on. Enuts Wallet, first public beta release. It's a custodial cashew wallet for Android and iOS. It's a strictly typed mobile uh, cashew wallet that has a lightning support and can connect to multiple mints. Nostra integration allows seamless transaction between you and your contacts. Uh, so this is kind of cool. I actually already played with it and tried it out. I'll probably do a video soon. Um, I like that Pavlinex from uh, BTC Pay says, impressive, using Nostra for contact payments is genius. Any other wallets doing this? Actually, yes, um, Mutiny Wallet is doing that now, which is, again, what a great idea. Um, but uh, on the, the website for Enuts, again, super easy. I've played around with it, but pretty much uh, you, you boot it up. You can load it with a Lightning transaction. From that point forward, um, basically everything that you do is entirely private. There's no way for even the people running the cashew protocol or running enuts to know what transactions are yours or who they're going to or all that kind of stuff it is custodial though that is the trade-off but you're kind of hiding in the group of anybody using the cashew protocol um, and a particular mint so you know trade-offs anyways if you're curious about cashew and all that i've done a couple videos on on cashew and how to use it uh but i'll be doing a, a video on enuts as well um Kind of cool to see this stuff uh, start to manifest and be more widely used. Uh, moving on, Cold Card has a firmware update. Um, a couple things uh, jump out to me in this release. Batch sign multiple PSBT files. So typically when you go to sign um, a transaction, you put the SD card in, you select the single transaction, sign it, it'll create the signed file. In this one, you can actually, it seems like you'll be able to sign multiple files at the same time, just batch sign them all, export them all, and you're all set. I also like that uh, Sparrow Wallet has been added as an individual export option. So when you go to export the wallet to use with a certain interface, they have all these options for different wallets, but the Sparrow Wallet option was always just generic JSON. Now you'll actually see like, oh, this works with Sparrow and you can just select it. And that was a common sticking point for a lot of people that I've done one-on-ones with where they're like, how do I how do I do this with Sparrow? Um, it'll be much easier when it just says, hey, Sparrow. It's the same contents of the file, uh, but it's just easier to pick out for people. Um, and then there's a lot of enhancements and bug fixes and stuff. So anyways, when you get the chance, update. 
Um, Nunchuck, this is a big one. This is a big one. I'm actually quite interested in this. I was privy to it a little bit earlier, uh, but uh, I think it's very interesting. They introduced something called Byzantine collaborative custody platform as a service. So what does this mean? Um, basically, it's a way for if you have Bitcoin advisors, like people that are helping people with security and all that kind of stuff, um, they can now use Nunchuck and the suite of tools to actually be um, the the signer of last resort for perhaps like clients that they deal with. So basically it says here from the quote, um, with Byzantine, you and your clients can effortless, effortlessly create multi-user, multi-sig wallets. Clients retain full control of their Bitcoins while you hold a backup key. It's security and peace of mind rolled into one. The basic idea is that anyone with key management expertise can now start a collaborative custody business for your community or network. Nunchuck provides you with the multi-sig infrastructure, collaboration, advisory tools, technical manuals, etc. And you take care of the customer service, onboarding, and managing backup keys on behalf of end users. And that's from uh, Hugo. And uh, it says Byzantine offers offers advanced tools for collaboration, wallet and key management, advisory tools, long-term inheritance planning. It uses cold storage for keys only and supports a variety of hardware signing devices. I mean, you guys, if you've seen some of my tutorials, you know all this, but they're doing early access now. So if you're a person that, that teaches and instructs and maybe wants to start offering this as a service where you get to be like that signer of last resort or like a just in case key for them and, and help them with their um, collaborative customers. This is a thing that that different firms and different, uh, I guess, Bitcoin advisors and experts can begin to offer. I like it because it throws a wrench in in the, uh, I, I guess, the model of oh, you've got a, a centralized entity that is managing keys, and so like a, a government could come knocking and say like, hey, you know, like give us information on your users, especially if it's KYC'd, you know, you, you have those possibilities and that honeypot of information. This kind of decentralizes that a bit. Yes, Nunchuck is offering the tool set, but it's kind of segregated out in that you have, yeah, there's a suite of tools that are offered up like software as a service almost. And then you have individuals that can say, hey, in my community, in, in my group of people that I'm advising, I get to be the manager of this and I get to help with all of that customer service and everything and, and education. And, you know, I can earn a living from that. And then I pay a fee to Nunchuck for their software as a service type deal. Uh, I think it's really cool. I think this really changes the landscape of collaborative custody and multi-sig. And uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what comes forth from this move. Because I, if, if I'm guessing, this isn't the last we've seen of innovations like this. And I think that this can iterate so much and become like an entirely different beast down the road. So I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know. Um, updates for seed signer, reproducible builds, faster startup. Seems like a lot of optim uh, optimizations and stuff. Again, don't trust verify. You can confirm yourself that our release images are exactly matching our FOSS repos. Faster startup, faster live camera display, QR based message signing. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff here. Again, it's mostly like speeds it up and, and makes it a lot more uh, efficient. Anyways, Seed Signer is always killing it. Definitely upgrade um, and take a look, see how it, see how it goes. Uh, this one, I really wanted to say a huge kudos to Bull Bitcoin and Francis Pouliot. Uh, this is really cool. Bull Bitcoin was exclusively a Canadian thing. No more. They've expanded to Costa Rica. So kicks off, uh, Bull Bitcoin kicks off their international expansion in Costa Rica in partnership with Bitcoin Jungle. Um, their entry to Costa Rica market officially kicks off their long-awaited international expansion. Over the next 12 months, Bull Bitcoin will become available to over a billion people worldwide. This was announced in a blog post. Bull Bitcoin is the first and only Bitcoin exchange in Costa Rica that lets users buy and sell Bitcoin using uh, 
SINP Mobile. That's the country's most primary fiat payment system. It's estimated over 90% of Costa Rican consumers using use SINP, um, a, mo- a phone number based payment network, which means that almost every Costa Rican now has access to a low cost, secure, and instant Bitcoin on and off ramp. For the first time ever, Costa Ricans and foreigners can convert Colonis, that's the local currency, um, to Bitcoin and Bitcoin to and from without needing complicated international bank transfers and expensive foreign currency conversion. Bull Bitcoin also allows conversion to and from bank accounts, IBAN, both in CRC and USD via regular bank transfers. Um, and again, from Francis's tweet, Bull Bitcoin has solved this problem. To pay anyone in Costa Rica, simply enter their phone number and make a Lightning Network payment. We convert it to Colonas and instantly send the payment to the recipient's phone. No registration, sign up, or paperwork required. That's fucking wild. That is awesome. Um, Francis is killing it. I, again, I think this is super awesome. I'm very happy for him. I'm very happy for Bull Bitcoin and this expansion. And what a great tool. What a great tool for people to be able to use there. So, um, yeah. Again, I, I can't wait to see more. And uh, yeah, hats off. Congrats, Francis. Um, anyways, guys, I'm going to start wrapping up here uh, really quick. Who's going to be down in L.A. Uh, next? It's coming up quick. Jeez. A few weeks away here, like less than a month. Uh, Pacific Bitcoin, October 5th and 6th in L.A. I'm very excited for it. Last last year was one of the highlights of my year, one of my favorite events that I got to go to. Um very focused, no riffraff. Like it was, it was a lot of fun, and it felt, it still felt like intimate. But like the the stage was amazing, the events were amazing. So, if you're going to be around, for sure check it out. Um, if you haven't grabbed tickets, you can go to PacificBitcoin.com and uh, use code Sessions, and you'll get twenty one percent off, which is. It's pretty solid. Um, so anyways, you can grab them there. I look forward to seeing you there uh, if you're going to be, and uh, there, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, also, while I'm there, um, I'm going to be running my workshop series. Again, I'll, I'll mention in a second as, as we round out the show, but two workshops. Number one, multi-sig with nunchuck. So what are we going to be doing there? Uh, we will break down how to set up nunchuck, how to set up a tap signer, how to use multiple tap signers to create multi-sig in nunchuck, and backups, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is the morning session. The afternoon session is cold card deep dive. And that means that we're going to be setting up, uh, backing up, using with Sparrow Wallet, doing air gap transactions, wiping the device, restoring the device, and diving into some of the advanced features. And that's the afternoon session. Anyways, uh, so we've got those two. They're coming up. I'll tell you guys how to grab tickets for that in a second uh, via my website. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's round it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, again, do like, subscribe, share again. That little like button is right down there. Click it, share it, all of that good stuff. And of course, don't sub- you can't forget to subscribe. That's how you're going to get all of your episodes every single week, including tutorials and including Why Are We Bullish? Uh, of course, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes if you want to help the show. And you can help the show in another way by heading to my website, btcsessions.ca. There you'll find a whole bunch of free content content. But if you need some additional handholding through any of those tutorials, you need some one-on-one time, you can book me for one-on-ones right there on the website. You can also check out my upcoming in-person workshops. There's one coming just around the corner uh, for Pacific Bitcoin. I'm going to be there uh, the day after the conference doing two separate workshops, one for multi-sig with Nunchuck and number two, of course, a cold card deep dive. So if you're interested in those, head over to my website. All the stuff is there under in person workshops. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always hit the tips button at the top. That'll take you over to my BTC pay server and you can tip me, buy me a coffee, help me buy more hardware to review, help me with my streaming software or node software, all that kind of stuff. Um, And again, thanks to any of you that have dropped some sats. I know sats are precious. Anyways, guys, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you guys next time for your Simply Session. Bitcoin.